गुड मॉर्निंग चिल्ड्रेन देन लेट्स स्टार्ट द सेम लेसन देन इन सो इन द लास्ट क्लास वी हैव सीन दैट सदाव हेल्प द एनिमी escape the general was also operated one week before sadaw servants and maid servant had come back the situation had become normal and after one week when the general was almost recovered then he informed the general that the enemy has the enemy had escaped now let's see but after week sada felt the general was well enough to be spoken to about the prisoner yes excellency he escaped sada now said he covered signifying that he had not said all the all he might have said but was unwilling to disturb the general further but the old man opened his eyes suddenly uh the old man was surprised the general was surprised to hear that the enemy enemy had escaped then sada made it clear sada told he should have informed him earlier but he could not tell him why because his condition was not good the general's condition was not good and now as he is almost uh, right in good condition so he is informing him but the general was greatly shocked when he heard this so when so he opened his eyes that prisoner he said with some energy did i not promise you i would kill him for you you did excellency sadaw said well well the old man said in a tone of amazement so sure i did but you see i was suffering a good deal the truth is i thought of nothing but myself and sought i forgot my promise to you the general told him that sadaw I didn't promise you that I would help you to kill the enemy. Then Sadaw told, "Yes, Excellency, you had promised." Then the general remembered something, and he said, "Yes, yes. Actually, I had forgotten my promise. I couldn't send my private assassins because I was so seriously sick that I was." concerned about my own health only i didn't think about anything else except my own health so really uh, i am regretting i must remember i am feeling sorry to think that i for i forgot such an important thing I wondered, Your Excellency, Sir Amomor. It was certainly very careless of me, the General said. But you understand, it was not lack of patriotism or dereliction of duty. He looked anxiously at his doctor. If the matter should come out, you would understand that, wouldn't you? Then now, the General was giving his justification. The General told, actually, he did this not because. He lacked patriotism. He was full of patriotic feelings. He was loyal to the country. He had enough love for the country. He was not negligent of his duty. Direction means negligent of duty. So no, he was no. He was not at all negligent of duty. It only happened because he forgot due to his serious condition. So Sada. It was Sadaw. So Sadaw, you can understand it. So if the matter will be disclosed, if the matter would come out, then you please would support him because you already know 
that uh, I was sure she has been sick. You have operated me. Certainly, Your Excellency, Sada said, he suddenly comprehended that the general was in the palm of his hand and that as a consequence he himself was perfectly safe. I can swear to your loyalty, Excellency, he said to the old general and to your zeal against the enemy. Then Sada told, certainly, certainly, surely he was not going to tell anyone. Sada told that he, he swears of his loyalty of his zeal, of his enthusiasm about killing the enemy. Me Sada told that he had no doubt about his patriotism. He had no doubt about his zeal to kill the enemy. So he was not going to tell about this to anyone. But Sada was happy to think that now the general was under his clutch. Now he had caught the weakness of the general. So the thought that, that now he was safe because the general was himself happy. So he was not going to be blamed. Nobody would have doubt that he helped the enemy to escape. You are a good man, the general murmured and closed his eyes. He will be rewarded. But Sada, such in the spot of black in the uh, twilight sea that night, had his reward. There was no prick of light in the dust. No one was on the island. His prisoner was gone, safe, doubtless, for he had warned him to wait only for a Korean fishing book. The general told, You are such a nice man. You are such a good fellow. You have saved my life. And you have promised that you are not going to tell these things to anyone. So, I will reward you. Children, a reward and award. Uh, the both are almost similar, synonyms of each other, but award is more formal than reward. Award is a huge prize to be given for any big achievement and reward just a small token of appreciation. And the both are verbs also. He was rewarded, he was awarded and the both are nouns. So, the general told that he would reward him for his goodness. But what about Sada? Sada, when he came back to his house and that night after darkness, he couldn't get any signal of light, any flash of light. Then he understood that the enemy had safely escaped. The enemy had safely left the island. So, Sadao had got his reward already because he was successful in helping the enemy to flee to the safety, to escape to the safety. So, he had already got his reward. He stood for a moment on the veranda, gazing out to the sea from where the young man had come that other night and into his mind, although without reason, there came other white faces he had known. For some time he stood on his veranda and from there he was looking at the shore. He was staring at the sea. From where? One night the enemy had come to his doorsteps. The enemy was washed away to his doorsteps. And then so many figures of some Americans came to his mind. After that he remembered so many Americans with whom he had already met, whom he had already met in America. The professor at whose house he had met Hannah, a dull man and his wife had been a silly talkative woman, in spite of her wish to be kind. He remembered his old teacher of anatomy, who had been so insistent on mercy with the knife. And then he remembered the face of his fat and slatterning landlady. He had had great difficulty in finding a place to live in America because he was Japanese. The Americans were full of prejudice and it had been bitter to live in it knowing himself their superior. 
how he had despised the ignorant and dirty old woman who had at last consented to house him in a miserable home. He had once tried to be grateful to her, uh, grateful to her, because she had in his last year known him through influenza. But it was difficult, for she was no less repulsive to him in her kindness. Now he remembered the youthful, haggard face of his prisoner, white and uh, repulsive. Uh, what happened? Uh, as I have already told that he remembered some American figures with whom he had already, uh, with whom he was already acquainted. Uh, such as, first of all, he remembered his American professor Harley, his wife, though the professor was dull, his wife was talkative, but still, in spite of their these demerits, they were kind. Then he remembered his professor of anatomy who always used to roar in his class that a surgeon must be aware of each and every part of human body before surgery, before operation. He must perform the operation with sympathetic views, with kind views. Uh, the surgeon uh, should uh, Catch his knife mercifully, miss operate mercifully. He remembered his this professor, and after that he remembered his landlady, whom he hated first of all, because she was an untidy woman. But at last the same woman had helped him, had nursed him, had served him when he was suffering from influenza. But even even when she was nursing him, he had the feeling of hatred for that man. He also remembered that how the Americans were prejudiced, passed against the Japanese. And at last, he remembered the enemy, the prisoner of the war, whom he had saved, whom he had helped in escaping. Though he hated the enemy from the core of his heart. But still, he helped him. He saved his life. And not only he saved his life, he helped him in escaping also. So sometimes, he had a question to himself that after all, why did he do this? But he had no answer for that. But the author happens. Why did he do this? Because first of all, we are human beings. After that, we are Americans or we are Japanese or we are the British. So, uh, he, was, uh, he was an American. So, he hated him because he was his enemy. But, he was a man. So, as a man, he had love for him. And he wanted to save his life. So as he was a man, so as a human being, he saved his life. But as he was American, as he was his enemy, so he hated him. And that's why he reported the general also. And that's why when general told him that he would send his private assistants to kill him, he agreed. So here you can see that on the one hand, if he was a true patriot, then on the other hand, he was a true human being also. At last, the theme of rest. Through this lesson, the writer Paulus Buck conveys that human values overpower all other factors, all the narrow feelings, all the narrow consideration, all kinds of prejudices. Uh, then, while reading the story, we all must remember the lesson, the birth in class 11. So there are some similarities between the both lessons. 
the both lessons highlight the dedication and selfless service of the doctors in the lesson the both the doctor although he was tired tried his level best struggled for half an hour and saved the child from dying and in this lesson also we have seen that the doctor putting his own life his career and his wife's life at risk at maximum risk saved the enemy's life first the title of the story the enemy it is quite justified quite apt and logical because the whole story revolves around the american prisoner who was the enemy of the japanese people because that time japan was at war with america as japanese dr sada should have handed him over to the police but the ethics of his profession made him save the enemy's life so that's all thanks